So one of the things that we have to understand in this article is what Mike Rose is talking about, about being average. And he's ex trying to explain, I think, how the teachers and himself and the system helped him want to be average and not want to be average. So let's look then on page two at the one, two, three, four, five. At the bottom of the fifth paragraph, the very last sentence, he says, I did what I had to do to get by. And I did it with half a mind. This is after his high school education. This is while he's in the vocational tract. I did what I had to do to get by, and I did it with half a mind. I'm not engaged. I'm not challenged. I'm just trying to get by, man. I'm just trying to get through. I just want to be average. Look on page three when he's talking about Ken Harvey. He goes into and explains a lot about all these students and he goes into the various characteristics of these students and you can really look at these characteristics if you want. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into it because it will help you understand the article but it just will take too much time and it's not really necessary for where we're going with our essay and I really just don't want this video to be too long. But Ken Harvey is important because Ken Harvey is expressing the same idea as Mike Rose. And in the middle of the page in paragraph 1212, one, Ken Harvey, he's talking about Ken Harvey. It says, one day in religion class, he said the sentence that turned out to be one of the most memorable of the hundreds of thousands I heard in the Voed Voc Ek years. So this sentence has stayed with Mike Rose. It stayed with Mike Rose till now. And this is the sentence. I just want to be average. And I actually wrote want to, but here it's wanna because it's slang. I just want to be average. I just want to get by. I just want to survive. That's what Ken Harvey is saying. Mike Rose goes on to say, that woke me up. Average? Who wants to be average? But his sentence has stayed with me all these years and I think I'm finally coming to understand it. Ken Harvey was gasping for air. School can be a tremendously disorienting place. No matter how bad the school, you're going to encounter notions that don't fit with the assumptions and beliefs that you grew up with. Maybe you'll hear these dissonant notions from the teachers, maybe from the other students, and maybe you'll read them. You'll also be thrown in with all kinds of kids from all kinds of backgrounds, and that can be unsettling. This is especially true in places of rich ethnic and linguistic mix, like the L.A. Basin, like where we are. You'll see a handful of students far excel you in courses that sound exotic and that are only in the curriculum of the elite. Then he goes on. And all this is happening while you're trying to shape your identity. Your body is changing and your emotions are running wild. If you're a working class kid in the vocational tract, the options you'll have to deal with this will be constrained in certain ways. You're defined. This is so important. This idea right here. We're in paragraph 1, 2, 3, in the middle of the paragraph. You're defined by your school as slow. You're placed in a curriculum that isn't designed to liberate you, but occupy you. Or if you're lucky, train you. Though the training is for work, the society does not esteem. Other students are picking up the cues from your school and your curriculum and interacting with you in particular ways. Okay. So what is he saying? 
He's saying that the school, the society, the teachers, you are in this environment. These kids, these students in this environment are in this environment. And the school, the curriculum is designed to occupy them, to train them to do this job. So if you're a kid like Ted Richard or Mike Rose or Ken Harvey, you turn your back on all of this and you let your mind roam where it may. Okay, what so many of these students do is protect themselves from such suffocating madness by taking on with such vengeance the identity implied in the vocational track. And this, this is what it means to be average. Right here, this one, the very end of this paragraph is what Mike Rose is saying that we're doing here to be average. Reject the confusion and frustration by openly defining yourself as the common Joe. Champion the average. Rely on your good sense. Fuck this bullshit. Bullshit, of course, is everything you and the others fear beyond you. Books, essays, tests, academic scrambling, complexity, scientific reasoning, philosophical inquiry. Just reject it all. It's too hard. Nobody's supporting you anybody anyway. Nobody cares. Just reject it. Let's just be average. Let's just get by. So that is what Mike Rose is saying is I just want to be average. And that is the whole first part of this essay. This is what it is. And what changes it? And then it goes on. The very next paragraph is so, so very important. It's the effect. It's why they're not successful. The tragedy is that you have to twist the knife in your own gray matter, gray matter being your brain, right? Gray matter is your brain, to make this defense work. You have to shut down, have to reject intellectual stimuli or diffuse them with sarcasm, have to cultivate stupidity, which means you have to pretend to be stupid, have to convert boredom, you have to be bored. To be average, to reject all this, these are the things you have to do. It's a defense. It's a defense, but it ex exacts a price. There's a price. So what he's doing is the whole part of this article with the bad teachers and the bad students and the, the, the situation, that's what this article is. But then there's a change. There's a change, and the change starts happening with McFarlane. Jack McFarlane, when he leaves in in this program and he goes into college prep, he starts talking about Jack Farland and he talks about college prep. And then he goes on to doing that. He talks about his father's health and he talks about what that is. And if we look at that, then we're talking about, again on page five, back to page five with Jack Farland, and we focus on the change, and we focus on critical thinking, and look in the middle of this page, okay, look on one, two, three, paragraph three, it says he wanted to teach his heart out, Jack Farland, so Jack is trying to change, Mr. McFarland is trying to change things. And how is he doing it? He slowly and carefully built up our knowledge. He's building the students' knowledge. He's breaking through this average, this defense, this I don't want to learn, this fixed mindset. Look in the next paragraph. He gives them linguistic weapons of a kind they hadn't encountered before. What does he give them? Language and thought and thinking. This is all here. It's here. He gives them ideas. He gives them poetry. He gives them Greek philosophy. He gives them Dante. He gives them Time Magazine. He gives them words. He gives them language. How does he give them change? He gives them concrete things. So when we're looking at change, look at the details. Before, before in the essay, 
I just read you all the things that they don't have. I just went over all the things that they didn't give you. But now, Rose is giving very specific details of things that Farland does give them. He gives them ideas. He gives them history. He gives them poetry. And it's all here on page five. It's all page on five. And some people can't be changed. At the bottom of page five, it says, there were some lives that were already beyond Jack McFarland's ministrations. Some people it was too late for, but for Mike Rose, it wasn't. Mike Rose was able to change with Jack McFarland and with this knowledge. So then we go on to more words, Heart of Darkness, on page six. Look on page six. In the first body, full body paragraph, it says extrinsic rewards. Extrinsic rewards takes us back to pink and the carrot and the stick. How cool is that? That's fun. And then we go on to more motivation. We talk about grades. We talk about language at the bottom of the page. Look on page seven. We talk about more reading. Do you see how important reading is? Why is reading so important? Reading gives us the tools. Language gives him the tools. Language gives it to him. Language helped him broke out. Language gave him the change. Words gave him the change. Critical thinking gave him the change. On page seven, there are so many lists here of things. On page seven in the first body paragraph, it says, I would be consuming my English teacher's library. So he would go over to Jack McFarland's house and read his books. How many of you do that? How many of you go to the library? How many students come to me and say, hey, Professor Undertree, can you recommend a book for me? I have a student right now that we're reading books together. How cool is that? And he has actually said to me, it's kind of crazy, but he said to me, Professor Undertree, I want to read every book that you've ever read. And I was like, okay, that's going to be really hard because I read a lot. But you know what? I think he can do it. I think he can do it if he wants to do it because he's a lot younger than me. So this is what Mike Rose is doing. He is consuming his English teacher's library. Why is he successful? Because of this. He goes on in the next to the last paragraph to say, I absorbed an awful lot of information. The very last sentence of that paragraph says, With hindsight, I realized how layered and important that knowledge was. It enabled me to do things in the world. Why was Mike Rose successful? Why was Mike Rose not average? Because of the knowledge because he absorbed an awful lot of information which enabled him to do things in the world. It was the information. It was the foundation. It was the critical thinking and the language and the ideas. This, this is what enabled him to do this. I love the very last line it says, but for a time, it was new and exciting. It provided a critical perspective on society. It allowed me to act as though I were living beyond the limiting boundaries of South Vermont. Knowledge was becoming a bonding agent. Knowledge was becoming a bonding agent. Knowledge. Knowledge. I love that. So, I just want to be average. I just want to be average. Is he average? I don't know. I don't know who Mike Rose is. But if you go back to the very beginning of the article, it says, Mike Rose is anything but average. He has published poetry, scholarly research, a textbook, and two wildly praised books on education in America. A professor in the School of Education at UCLA. He is not average. And why? Knowledge. Knowledge is what helped him not be average. So, is there anything wrong with being average? No. If you want to be average, be average. But be average because you want to be average, not because 
society forces you to be average. So this is Mike Rose, I Just Want to Be Average, and it's a great essay to apply to your memoir and for our class. So I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, you know what to do. Hey everybody, so that was Mike Rose, I Just Want to Be Average, and it was for my class. If you liked it, leave a like. I'm new with this whole YouTube thing. This is a new setup. Lighting is really hard, and I'm really not good at it, but I'm trying really hard. I am trying to get 100 subscribers to my channel so that I can get a custom URL, so it's a little bit easier to have it on my cards. So if you want, subscribe to my channel. I plan to have a lot more video lectures on um, classroom kind of things, and I have a lot of upcoming really exciting things. So if you liked it, leave a like, and if you enjoyed it, subscribe so you can watch all my videos. Have a great day!